I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what's funny? Um, before I even begin, I have to. I, I'm going to do the gooder promo Jesus. here. But what? It's on. It's back. The volume oh. is on. Yeah. Well, hit mute, kid. Technology guy. It is muted. Is it playing through the TV behind? Oh, it is playing through the TV, so it's not me. Why would it be playing through there? I don't know. Hey, guy. Mr. Controller. Be great to have a guy who knows how to do a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> did it stop? Yes. It did. <laughs> did everything else work? Yeah. How does that crow know. taste? <laughs> <laughs> I, let me see. If I'm going to crack the yeah, door open. The theme's still going to work. You can crack the door. Um, so speaking of, yeah, I was I was to say before I start with the good promo, which I'm going to do here shortly. Um, you remember that that cheesy little funky beat I did last yeah, yeah. week? Yeah. Um, YouTube flagged me for it. Really? They're like, yeah. They're like, no, you can't use that. It came with the software. It was just a stupid little software thing, a little beat. And they're like, nope, can't make money off of this. Huh. I'm like, well, thank God I don't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> So you owe be- me. Yeah, before <laughs> we begin, hey, YouTube, this is free. Wow. It's really steep. Cheesy. Paul, you're going to hate it already. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys, before we begin, it's time to officially kick off the summer. No, really, it's the first day of summer. And as you know, we here at Packville are only endorsed products and services that we truly believe in. We use them. We enjoy their services and so on. And with this in mind, Packville's Gooder Summer has begun. 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 We have been given a specific amount of discount codes, everybody, just for you guys, friends of the Packville, for 15% off your purchase. If you take into account the Gooders are already the most affordable quality eyewear out there, that makes this even better of a deal. Use the code PACKFILLER15. That's 1-5, not F. Yeah. To get your uh, discount on non-slip polarized stylish shades for both on and off the bike, make sure to use it wisely, which means, in other words, make sure to grab a couple pair with the discount. So the Pack Fillers Gooder Summer is officially underway, and I have 12 seconds left in my non copyrighted music background bed. <laughs> Are we just going to sit here in it? Or like... There. Okay. Oh, right. I feel so much better. <laughs> Let's do this with a theme that was written just specifically for this show. <laughs> and I have to say from a person I can't remember and I owe that person a gigantic apology and if you were listening to the show still and you're not really bitter about things we should talk. Yeah, you Seriously. could probably. Yeah, you, you could, could give me better your... than the gooder thing. Yeah. I could get. I could like. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, as I said previously, summer is here. We have an option to choose our perspective on how things are going to go this summer. We can think, hey, the Tour de France is right around the corner, and the weather is getting better. Right. That's option one. Or option two, we can think. Shit, the Tour de Suisse was barely completed due to a massive COVID positives, and the weather is absolutely shit around the world. We're all going to die or drown in a matter of weeks. Bring on the locusts. (laughs) So that's, I think, basically what we're staring down the barrel of. Option A or option B. We're trying to stick with option one around here as the home of the two-wheeled lifestyle. Welcome to the Pack Filler Podcast, live from the Rim Break Bar. I'm Pat Bulger. We have a full panel tonight with a special returning guest. Welcome all. (laughs) Uh, you guys all have to answer, of course, the question upon your introduction, which is... I'm not going to sneeze. Yes, you are. Look at the light. What actor or musician did you have a huge crush on as a teenager? What actor or musician did you have a gigantic crush on as a teenager? So, first and foremost, he's very likely the reason why your local bike shop is out of rim brake pads, Mr. Paul Main. <laughs> I do store up on those. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, man? Doing all right. Yeah. Who did you have a crush on? Fess I up. can't remember her name, and it was actually kind of late teens, but the lead singer from Missing Persons. Do you hear me? Yeah. And, and, and then I found out she's just tall. You know, oh, really? Yeah, she's pretty short. So, you have a height thing? Yeah, my wife has a height thing. I have a height thing. My wife always thought Chris Isaac was hot, but she says he's too short. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So the lead singer, Missing Persons. Yeah. Was it what because of what she wore on stage? She wore very little on stage. Well, uh, not, not, not to the be stage stuff. I, I, but... Just the videos and stuff was my yeah, yeah. First, first connection with that. So, yeah. I thought she was just kind of quirky enough. I get them in Berlin and, and then mixed also, up all the time. Um, 
the Icelandic singer. Bjork? Bjork. Bjork. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Those two. Okay. Bjork, maybe, I, now that I think about it, may lean towards that a little More bit. Bjork. Yeah. More Bjork. More Bjork. <laughs> <laughs> but that, Swedish, that again, the Swedish I chef from the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, we might be uh, slammed on yeah, that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. We're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, second of all, he's officially the person who has traveled the farthest to appear live here in the Rim Break Bar. <laughs> Our old friend, uh, teammate, and legend, Mr. Brent Soderberg. How are you, man? Yeah, great, great, great to be back. We, yeah. When, when was the last time you were yeah, here? It was back in. I think December of 2019, just before uh, COVID. Just before COVID. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So uh, I mean, I could go and in, delve into the history of our our lives together, but people need to delve into the history of the show. But um, who did you have a crush on, uh, movie or or music? I could go with music. Probably someone like like Linda Carlisle. Someone like oh, Linda Carlisle. Yeah. Good choice. I I I was yeah. Yeah, the Go Go's. Yeah, yeah, big fan of Blind yeah. Carlisle. I agree. I agree. And I'm, I'm going to confess that I kind of had a little fantasy that she was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really divulging way too much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, third off, he destroyed the triple digit demon, Mr. Jackson Boulder. How are you, man? Doing well. Um, Let's see. I Who don't get the crushy crush on Jackson. Yeah, and this is going to be fairly recent because yeah. you were a teenager. What a week ago? Yep, exactly. Only <laughs> three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I, it's it's a tough one because I don't think about it all that often. Is it a Disney star, Jackson? No, it's it's tough because it's like when I was younger, I I like I don't like remember who it was. I always wanted to like I had like a crush in terms of like I wanted to be. Like I always wanted to be Joe Jonas when I was sure. younger. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But I don't know if I had which one's Joe. Joe's the the singer one. Nick's the most talented, as we all oh, know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I always wanted to be Joe. I don't I want to be Joe. Yeah, I don't know if I specifically remember the crushes that I had, but so you're, I mean, you're gonna bail on the whole crush thing. It wasn't a Amanda from the Amanda Show. It wasn't see, Britney. No, not Britney Spears. It wasn't uh, who, who, who Hannah Montana. It wasn't uh, Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. No, I it's uh, it, like I said, really? it's tough to remember. Really? Yeah. yeah, you're just saying that because I'm in the room, right? <laughs> yep, that's the only reason. You just gonna be creepy because you know, yeah. he didn't have any, he didn't have any <laughs> posters in his room. Huh. My father gave me the that classic poster of all the naked. This is I'm gonna get um, in trouble for <laughs> yeah. objection. I, but of all the naked women at the start of the the bike race, did you guys ever see that one? I think it was on a Queen album. Uh, My I, dad I gave it to yeah. me in t- in high school to put in my room. <laughs> What an, fuck, odd, what an odd gift yeah. from a father. Yeah, it's like going, hey, I hear you like cocaine. Here's crack. <laughs> it's pretty much going, hey, here's your sexual awakening. Yeah. I did give you a bottle <laughs> of Jerkins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just burn it off, boy. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, me, I'm the guy who ironically couldn't speak for about two hours on Saturday, which is ironic because usually I, we all know I have nothing but the ability to speak. I'm Pat Bulger, and I had a crush on I, originally Farrah Fawcett, but that was not okay. grade school okay. years. That was that was not high school. That was not teenager. I had that Farrah Fawcett poster, um, but then I I did shift to Paulina Poroskova. Okay, yeah. okay. she was my she, she was in one movie uh, called called Her Alibi with Tom Selleck. And maybe that's why I have a mustache today. That Paulie, you know, come back to me. Rick Ocasek, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. Li- they were married forever. Yeah, and she's she's yeah. all over Twitter nowadays because yeah. somebody called said like, quit trying to be sexy because you're old. And it's like, Pauline is like, fuck you. And she's, <laughs> yeah. she looks dynamite. Yeah. She looks amazing. And we can all probably agree, except for Jackson, that I intentionally didn't say an athlete because we all would have said on the count of three, one, two, three. Rebecca, Rebecca Twig. Twig, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. We all every every junior cyclist loved Rebecca Twig back in those days. She was she, except I was more her age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <sorry>. really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. I have, I have a signed autograph of hers. I, I think the first bike race I ever did, she really? was there like signing autographs. So there in Seattle. Hold yeah, on to that. Seattle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody's gonna immediately comment on YouTube about, oh, she's in Seattle now. Yeah. 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 Oh, anyway. Man. Uh, so welcome, Brent. What brings you to the Northwest, man? What brings you back? I came out to see some family when my uh, I had a nephew that got married. So came out to visit my family and sister and brought the bike out. And that's a, 
little side story with that <laughs> one. But, um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, texted Paul and said, hey, you want to go for a ride? And uh, I it, said, thumbs up. So you have yeah. always been good up. about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, originally I wanted to do the, the um, Grand Fonda with you guys, but yeah, I just couldn't, couldn't work out the, the logistics with that. But um, after some flight delays, got here Friday and put my bike together and the DI2 did oh, not shit. work. <laughs> oh, just, no. I mean, uh, I listened to that Murray Jamison um, <laughs> interview. Interview you did like a few, about a month ago, and that's exactly what happened to me. Oh um, no! Yeah, the, would not work. Uh, you know, I tried everything, so I was texting Paul saying, "I don't think this ride is going to happen." And I brought it up to one of the bike shops up in the north end of Spokane, and um, they helped me out. Got it put back together. It was bad, a bad wire. Which so. one was it? North Division, and I there we go. Old, a couple old friends there. I actually ran into someone, another friend of the podcast, when I was dropping off the bike. Really, Roger? Oh, oh drink! Oh, oh yeah. shit! <laughs> you got yeah. a drink, Brent? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he likes the beer I gave him because you know, he, yeah. he told me when he walked in, I'm not a big fan of IPAs. But I was did like, you give, oh, did shit. You give you an IPA? No, it's, no. it might no. be. Well, that's pretty good. It might That's be. We, good. There's the. Bernadus, we yeah, can always we, just that'll uh, juice him up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, this is my side of the story. Okay. So he texts me, and I'm all like, old oh, jazz. And I'm telling my wife, I'm getting all, you know, like, I haven't seen Brent, and he, we're kind of the same style right Honey, you got to let me go this no, time. No, yeah, she, it, we were, I was clear <laughs> anyway, but, you know. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you guys were off doing your little silly little Take thing. it easy. <laughs> 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 and so, uh, mine was free. How much did you guys... Uh, anyway. We'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll okay. get to that. All right. So, um, so he, you know, I give Fuck. him a thumbs up and everything. <laughs> and right before I go to see my in-laws, my wife and I are visiting the in-laws. Uh, it, we kind of set a time and everything. I said, "Great, see you then." You know, he he actually being a computer guy he sent me like, "This is my map." He did my was it my map? Or my map ride? Uh, ride with GPS. Ride with GPS. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So he sent me that, and I like downloaded. I said, "What a geek." <laughs> that was under my breath, and then no, what I you could did, feel my phone what exploding. You did was you were like, I don't understand. <laughs> no, I did it's because me- it's right it's in front not of me. You know, mechanical. he made it easy for me. I was <laughs> like, oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know they could I do that. I made it at a coffee shop by his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was easy. it was perfect. So it, anyway, I could feel my phone exploding in my pocket, and that's one thing you don't do personal problem. Yeah, yeah. it was just like buzz, and I'm like, oh, who is that? Hopefully it's not Brent because there's other people. I don't know if it's you guys or sure. there's another group of guys, ex bike racers of mine that always get on that kick. And so I said I had to go to the bathroom and I look and I start reading. I'm like, oh shit, this is the wrong person to bail on a I ride know. because <laughs> of mechanical. Uh, I said on Tuesday, issue. you know, I'm going to bring this up. <laughs> and so, but he was able to get it fixed. And so it's like, yeah, because I was looking forward to the ride. Yeah, and. And he said, "Hey, on the ride, he goes. I think there's a segment we can we can get a KOM." Oh, yeah. That, you had that planned out that yeah, far he did. in advance. Wow, I didn't even well, know I where saw, it was. I looked, I looked at the the um, segments on this route, and he already had one of them. So I said, "Let's go for another one." And yeah, we got it. He had it for a while, but I had it until he <laughs> uploaded his route. And and the funny thing is, I wrote it backwards the next day. That's not the one I want. But and anyways, and, and I looked gone. at it where, where it was marked. Mm-hmm. We we coasted you, for you about. You could have had it by another ten seconds. I know it easy. He, he just, <laughs> he, we coasted like the last part. Yeah, racing stead, Jackson. Racing stead. They're gonna give us. They're gonna bust our balls <laughs> for actually paying an entry fee. <laughs> but they got a Strava segment. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, did you guys we get any better. Strava segments? I'll, I'll go out and probably beat it. Yeah. Did you know. look? We got a third on one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Brett, you've been riding a ton, man. I, I I stalk you through Strava and your social media and stuff like that. Um, so do you? First of all, do you feel comfortable enough telling us the the where you ride, the the where you live and where you ride? Don't give the address. Because yeah, I won't give my address. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I live yeah. up kind of in Northwest Connecticut. I've uh, been out there for like twenty years. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of great riding there. You kind of easily get out into the countryside and a lot of winding roads. Mm-hmm. 
Tell me about uh, the the good things about writing. You know, you you were here, you grew up around the Northwest and things like that. And I'm personally biased, obviously. So I'm going to, you know, go, well, it's nowhere better. But but seeing, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the you know, especially the gravel scene and things like that, which are gigantic up there. But what do you what what are the good things and what makes it special about about where you live and where you ride? Yeah, I mean, I think where I live now, I miss definitely the big kind of mountains out here, but there's a lot of hills. There's so many just winding roads with very little traffic, um, little dirt road connectors. Um, on the, you know, a couple hour drive to get up to Vermont from where I live. Oh and, man. And so, you know, Western Massachusetts, Vermont, um, the areas where I live are really nice for just great back roads. So now gravel seems to be, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, much more in its prime as farther you go east than it is here almost. Yeah, I mean, I guess the big scenes are like kind of the Midwest. Yeah. It's just a little bit different. And Vermont, I think, is, has its own kind of unique style. Um, and some of those roads out there, are, are the gravel roads are like more pristine than the, really? <laughs> than the, than the tarmac. So it's um, just really nice. A lot of hills, though. So Yeah. Um, what uh, what are the, do you have bad you know we all want to know what the good things are but we also want to know what the bad things are you know tell me about you know the the cars versus bikes scenarios the the do you get ro- people rolling coal on you and stuff like that we all want to believe that there's a mecca somewhere that yeah. there's this beautiful place where you can ride and everybody's like hi it is would you nice. like an apple pie as you're riding yeah. by <laughs> instead of throwing a hamburger at yeah. you like yeah that story so I tell funny. you Jackson yeah yeah we don't have as many big trucks out there as i noticed you have around here yeah. <laughs> but you, i we have you do get the people rolling coal every now and then but not not too often more so you have to look out for the uh the weekend new yorkers are up in the, uh, oh. in the hills mm-hmm. in, their, in their bmws yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like you being on the road taking pictures it. as yeah. they're driving by you and shit like that yeah, yeah. um would you tell me about what you're what you you know are, are there things you're training for events challenges anything like that that you're kind of shifting towards or, well, or leaning towards this kind of goes back to 2019 when i was here my my big goal was to go over and do the rift ice yeah. and yeah and that's been put off for two years so i'm going actually going back over in a couple in about four weeks to do that wow. so that's no shit that's really super cool so that's um kind of been motivating to keep me riding more this year i definitely got more miles in this year than last year so Okay, tell the unexperienced uh, listener, which is me, um, <laughs> everything about this, the the rift, and what this is, what this is. Yeah, so the rift has been going on a few years. Um, I think if you follow Instagram and social media of some of the yeah. gravel riders, you've seen um, people like I think Pete Stetton went over there last year and did it, and it's um, 125 mile, 200 kilometer um, ride around. A volcano basically in southern Iceland so yeah. it's, oh man it looks pretty rough um some of the uh the gravel might be a little more harsh than what I'm used to yeah. so that's probably the one thing that's worried me a little bit but how'd you get in was it a lottery kind of a scenario I think it was just basically yeah open sign up well I think um some I had a friend that had had gotten in and he had some kind of link that I got. It was able to kind of sign up before, oh, no shit. before really? like the regular public. So <laughs> I got, I got, that's how I got in. And then it's just, they kept on rolling my entry over from year to year. Until oh, sure. I, yeah. So finally, that, this year. I've yeah. seen footage of that. I've seen mm-hmm. footage of people just going over there and, and just writing and everything about it. My wife even looks at me while I'm watching it. And she just goes, Oh, we could go there. I'm going, I'm thinking this would be, hard it would be you know a, a beautiful version of hell but my wife's like oh the villages are cute i could hang out i could do all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff while you're coughing up a lung and then you know we have a cute little <laughs> hotel let's come back to my wife yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's getting into this kind of thing because she, she didn't yeah. have to do yeah, my wife shit. and daughter are going i probably send them to like a spa or something <laughs> oh <laughs> man oh man that's cool. that's cool that is really cool um, so I want to know how the past week went for, well, what's your training like, Brent, but coming into this, I mean, are you doing, uh, it just super into it one day off kind of long ride bolt kind of thing or. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely like last like four or five weeks have really been pretty consistent building up more miles. Usually get a pretty long road ride on the weekend. Um, usually try to do 
on uh, like a Tuesday. We usually take Mondays off. Um, all of my wife likes to ride, so we go with like an easy ride on the bike path on Mondays. Yeah, yeah. Then Tuesdays, we usually do like a road ride, maybe with a couple other people, um, get the hills hard and kind of recover type of thing. Um, you know, 10 minute efforts, that kind sure. of stuff. And usually hit a gravel ride on Wednesdays and kind of just recover a couple of days and then hit it again on the weekends. Are you going to race or are you going to finish? You know, a couple of years ago, I would have probably, I was probably <laughs> like, oh, done, oh, I got myself a coach and yeah. Yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then that once COVID hit, I think it all ended. So I think, well, a couple of years ago, I would have probably tried to go for a better time. And I probably, now it's like, well, that's a great experience. And I'm going to, if I want to stop and take a picture, I'm going to stop yeah. and take a picture. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like, I'm not going to just be like looking at my power meter or something, yeah. trying to get around there, you know, I'm just going to enjoy the scenery, enjoy the yeah with experience oh my god that, cool. that, that you know and you get so many times where I, I yeah you are staring at those numbers and i remember we were at belgian waffle and the guy uh, there was a guy when we were riding talking to other people he knew he says oh, i'm just gonna stare at my screen and i want to keep it at 100 and, or, or a specific <laughs> yeah, watt like that, number yeah. he said i was just like going i have to beat that guy because <laughs> that guy's yeah. not enjoying the ride and i didn't well, I did enjoy the ride. Yeah, we'll get into that sort here of. in a minute. People oh, who yeah, say yeah. they don't enjoy the ride, and uh, that's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to you, Waples. Uh, Paul, <laughs> let's go to you. How was how was your last week riding? Uh, well, um, I thought I was going to have today and yesterday off. I did have yesterday off, um, but uh, work called. On today, did people so. give you shit on Strava when you ride on days that you're supposed to be working? Because I rode today and people gave me endless amounts of shit. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, the, I've got so in get fact, to work. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm school teacher. Yeah. I don't work. Yeah. <laughs> Shows at six. No, I got a couple of response riding with Brent because there was a KOM no, involved. Okay. And, but one of them was a guy who graduated or he graduated from the same school I did two years ahead, Ted Middlestat. Remember yeah. Him? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Ted, uh, grew up at Reardon and, and he was a fantastic, I, I think he had a state record in the one mile, two mile mm-hmm. when he was, he, he's, and I sold him a Pook frame it was mine. I, I used at one point in time and, and I sold it to him. He's a good writer, great guy and everything. So I didn't know you guys were teammates until he, yeah, we're teammates and actually, Probably maybe five years ago, I I was going over to Seattle, and he actually didn't want to borrow one of his bikes, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a great guy. So, yeah, I had uh, like 50 miles with you, um, and it was pretty fun because uh, once we hit, I said, I, I said, Brent, I don't know where this segment starts, so I'll let you lead out. And he says, okay. And then all of a sudden, it's just I could see his, this big guy just, boom, diesel power. We're both mashers, <laughs> and it's like – Oh fuck! This is so much fun. We were flying. It's about a two and a half mile yeah segment, and it's it, it was you know brought you back. Started waxing sentimental about the whole. T- yeah, it was great. I think we had a nice so, tailwind too. Yeah, yeah. we did oh. a tailwind slightly downhill. Oh wow! An average what thirty four something miles. An hour. Like thirty four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, holy shit! So two and a half miles. So. And you got yeah. it. Yeah, I and mean, I coasted probably about. Yeah, I think I got by like good five, four, five, five seconds or more. Yeah, and we coasted like the last because we weren't sure where it ended. So. Yeah, we just. I want to get a segment. I want to get a KOM before We've I die. We've been close. Before I die. Oh, in yeah, fact, there's one a time the three close. of us and there's a lot CP of when we we're down in um, Tico uh, or Oaksdale. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember, and the the only guy ahead of us was. Uh, Logan uh, Owen or Owen Logan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What? What? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it can happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I'm right. I'm never gonna. But we got to have somebody that's that, like, says, "Hey, there's a segment, <laughs> like, yeah. run around." Yeah, that's <laughs> if true. It, if it makes you feel any better, I don't have one. You don't. Well, you can get them though. You're, you've <laughs> you got, got an too. open horizon ahead of you. I've got a very short room. <laughs> Oh it's just God. like I'm walking towards the door, and I'm about to close it behind me. It's like <laughs> never again. I honestly climbed uh, Valley Chapel last year, and I went, that's probably the fastest I'm ever going to climb it. Is that depressing? Yep. You also, <laughs> speaking of, rode yeah. with... CP. What? Yeah. So here's the thing. This is like a great you weekend for me. CP. Because I get to ride with an old friend, an old teammate. Yeah. And we get a K- KOM, and then I'm riding with CP yesterday, or, or no, wait, Sunday, 
And uh, that was the longest ride he's done in a year. Fans of the show will know CP. Yeah. He, he yeah. kind of pops in and out yeah, here yeah. and there. There were times where he'd sit at the end of the bar and just like, yeah, I just want to sit here and have a beer and listen to you guys do the show. And there were times where I'm like, oh, I need you to talk. And he's like <laughs> shaking his head. No, I can't talk. I can't talk. I can't talk. They're going to, the bots are going to track me and yeah. they're, they're going to find me. And the, <laughs> the next thing I know, the government's going to be black helicopters. No, but I'm, I'm giving CP shit because he, he says he doesn't listen to the show anymore because it he's, he's him. back on because he's he? riding his bike. That's great. Yeah, uh, he's, you know it what? was hard when he wasn't riding his bike to hear or talk or read about cycling yeah. because it was so distant. Well, if you're listening bike. right now, CP, the the seat at the end of the bar is always yours, man. You, you always go. have a seat yeah. here. Yeah, he's he's just we, a classic guy. And we finished the ride at Benedito's and grabbed a Belgian beer. Nice. And chit-chatted afterwards. So. Nice. Yeah, it was a good weekend. And so, it was free other than the beer. Oh, okay. So that was like $16 with the two beers. So, okay. Yeah. Let's get to it then, you, <laughs> you asshole. Jack, no, that was my segue. Yeah, that was perfect because yeah. because Jackson and I finished the, the Chafe Grand Fondo, which I found out is not like the word chafe, like, oh, my thighs are chafed. It actually is an, an acronym. Is that the word I'm looking yep, for? Yeah. For, for, uh, for something for education, I guess, is the last mm-hmm. two parts of it. So it's like it's a charity, man. So, mm-hmm. you know. Take your expensive stuff and shove it up your ass <laughs> because we um, we finished it. We did the 100 uh, miler and um, we uh, we finished. We more than finished. <laughs> we won. We got first and second, which I want to get into a little bit uh, on this here about the whole first and second here as we get going here. <laughs> but um, but this is Father's Day weekend, and I'm not going to cry throughout any part of this podcast because I, <laughs> I I did enough of that already. But um, let's let's put a little perspective on this event. As I've said many times, is a fondo okay? fun ride the grand fondo the big ride you know and it's kind of it's it's fun fond fun does not have a part of fondo but the big ride is what it is and so we've talked about this regularly on the show and fondos can be races mm-hmm. issue yeah okay i got nods from around the room so jackson we decided to race this thing right we did okay so tell me about your day particularly going into this and how you felt and and surprises in the course and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, yeah, it was going into it. I had the idea of, I mean, hell, I want to win the thing. Um, or I want to get like, I want us to get close to it. You know, I want my dad's ass across the front line. <laughs> uh, well, I wanted us to be at the front, whether it be 10th, whether it be first and second, who knows. Um, and then when we originally set out, I wasn't sure if our mentalities, you know, if they were equal um, on that part of it all. Um, but right as we rode out, I mean, it was three of us. So that was yeah. pretty, I mean, automatically that was. The that asshole made it was there, Paul. Huh? Not the asshole, but just the like, I'm leading out of here first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah like the com- the uh, the competition was yeah, there, yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, throughout the day, it was, um, we just stuck it, or at least for me, I just stuck it really steady. Um, I really had to make sure that I stayed up on eating and drinking. That was the toughest part for me, I think, because um, I knew that if I did every hour, it wouldn't be enough. And so I did about every 45 to 30 minutes. Um, and after a while, around mile 60, yeah, mile 60, I started to feel some stomach issues. And I the entire time was like, it's going to suck to eat, but you got to do it. And mm-hmm. so um, I every time I'd like I'd take a pull at the front and then I'd come to the back and I'd say, if I'm not eating now, next time it's going to suck, but you got to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just shoved as much untapped and scratch as I could. Um, yep. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know. I don't know if you want me to get into that finale portion yet. Well, it, the thing about it for for, for the you know uh, we we said we were going to start plugging events on the show and and one of them this is the third time we third have done time, this yeah. event and this is the first time we've done the one hundred and um, this is um, North Idaho at its finest and I know you're probably listening to this wherever you may live and going wait North Idaho fine good what no. Um, it is it is 
absolutely some of the most beautiful places places mm-hmm. I've ever ridden in my entire yeah. life. Uh, waterfalls. Uh, we had a deer cross the road in front of us. Um, absolute beautiful greenery, mountains, uh, snow capped <laughs> still at this point in time, and uh, absolutely beautiful. And the the last times we had done it, there were some s- kind of not sketchy, but some some questionable sections when we're riding on a highway with a pretty narrow shoulder and sometimes when you're riding these shoulders you you are in north idaho and you're gonna have somebody with a gigantic dodge Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who doesn't want to give you much leeway and the and the chafe people have taken that into account and they changed the course which i didn't know going in and Mm -hmm. they did some alternative routes that that kind of circum you know take you around different areas and it it got even better um, and it was it was great. And um, we should mention that we had two teammates in the 150 mile distance. We did the the, the flying Waples brothers, uh, who also took flying first and second, first and second in there in the, did they? Yeah, yeah. They, they, right yeah, yeah, in the 150. And uh, Sam isn't here, so we can speculate um, a little bit about the insanity that is Sam Waples. Um, <laughs> He fits you to your bike great, but uh, he he went into this mentality with this. I'm going from Couch, couch to 150 mm-hmm. and uh so you know I'll, I'll get to that in a second but our our strategy you know i you know i i, I don't want to i i always my brain always immediately tries to belittle it well it wasn't as big of a crowd as it was before covid or or there were you know the strong guys were blah 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 blah, 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 blah you know because i want to find a way to make my my happiness Go away. <laughs> You're not comfortable with it. Yeah, I am. I'm we, a, <laughs> we were the strong guys. I don't like joy. Um, and yeah. so, hence, I'm a bike rider. But that's why you have a podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so we, we rolled out, and out of nowhere, we had this, this guy who was with us who mm-hmm. looked at us and went, Well, I guess it's just four of us now. And about five miles later, it was three of us. Yep. And, um, we all just kept rotating through. I mean, taking pretty substantial pulls the entire way. And um, <laughs> um, we we got to this point where... Actually, let me ask you, Jackson. Okay. Um, tell me about conquering that di- that distance demon. Was it was it the fueling thing, or did you have something in the back of your mind? Because you've done... We've done some long-distance events before where you've kind of gone... You've had a hard time towards the tail end. We've had Belgian Waffle where you left me behind and and then I caught up to you. I'm not, you know, bragging. No. You know, I just want to make myself look like <laughs> shit. But but this was the first time that you finished an event absolutely flying. Did you did you, mm-hmm. were there any moments where you were like, I'm not gonna be able to keep going or, or? Um No. The whole time it was just I, I this year's been a, a, a different year. I think every time that I've entered a competition, it's just been I've I've been really locked in competitively, um, and so this entire time it was like I, I was I had the mentality for it. Um, I knew how I needed to eat, and um, I think training and you know how every cyclist talks about how training, age, genetics, they all at one yeah. point in your life really like come to a peak. I'm not saying this is my peak, but like. I can. I'm definitely. It's a short room, Jackson. Yeah. You're gonna hit the door here soon. <laughs> I know, yeah, but yeah, I'm. De- yeah. I'm definitely starting to feel like all that stuff's, you know, kind of coming together. Um, so it's just a culmination of different, different things, you know. We got to this point. The, before I get, we're gonna get over this here shortly. But we got to this one point where the three of us were doing really well together, and then we got to this long, steady, gradual climb, and uh, and the guy who was with us, super nice guy, honest as hell, he went. What did he say? Some, uh, oh, he goes, uh, man, I don't think I can go any faster on these climbs anymore. <laughs> Jackson just... <laughs> don't okay say that. Yeah. 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 He immediately went to the, the front of our, our little trio and just set a tempo down. And the next thing I knew, all I was doing, I mean, it was tunnel vision. I was just staring at his hub, <laughs> just focusing on it. And you said to me, like... Oh, I went... You tell me, faster or slower? That's all I said. And your response was, there was all it, it was. Mama. It was <laughs> really close. Yeah. Really close. It was two words. Can't talk. That's all it was. <laughs> the entire time. I was so redlined. I was just staring at it, just going, 
if he goes any faster, I'm fucking popped. And I know that I'm going to be the kind of guy who's going to say, Jackson, just go ahead. Just take the victory, man. Just go. I'm good. But he was like, no, fucker. Mm -hmm. uh, you're staying on here. And, and, and he, he catered his dad home. And yes, we finished together. I pushed him ahead of me. But the timer, I think, was feeling sorry for the old guy and, and put me first on the roster. So a big thanks to the organizers of the Chafe for the, for the event. Um, and I do want to ask really quickly, do, do we all have somebody like Sam Waples in our, fr in our friendship circles who is just this guy who's like going, I'm just going to go out and hurt myself. I, wanna, I, I just want it, to – it's this masochism that is just beyond safe. <laughs> safe? <laughs> um, <laughs> He's just he went from like I uh, yeah I've done some rides to I'm doing 150 miles it, and he I know he had some whiskeys the night before and I know he got up at three o'clock in the morning and drove out there and he still went out there and and averaged like 20.5 miles an hour for 150, for 150 miles, miles. Yeah. Uh, is the, is he insane stubborn stupid or strong oh all yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. okay okay I just wanted to know so um. Paul, we're going to get to the point you wanted to talk about, and this is our first kind of topic here. Uh, entry fee of one hundred twenty-five bucks. Um, that is with, and Brent, I know you can probably speculate on some of the entry fees you're dealing with. Have a forbid flight to places where you're going. Uh, w the event was one hundred twenty-five bucks. It, that was with a fifty-dollar minimum of fundraising, so the, you know, mm. seventy-five bucks, and they asked you to raise fifty bucks. Um, uh, what makes an entry fee a proper value? Whoop! What wow. makes an entry fee a proper value in your minds? Um, you know, is that what makes it too much? What makes it too cheap? What makes it just right? You know, I don't know what it's going to cost you to go to something like this that you're going to here in a couple of weeks. It's got to be pretty damn spendy. What makes it worth it? I think for that particular thing it's just the whole experience is like basically a vacation so okay you're willing to spend a little bit more money and it's like a once in a lifetime type of situation but i think for the average kind of like taekwondo ride i think it just kind of depends a little bit about does it is it supporting are you fucking kind of supporting a good cause um i know we have a ride that that our local kind of junior cycling organization puts on and it's it's a fundraiser type of thing and it's you have to, you have to raise a certain amount of money. So if you, if you sign up sure. and then you don't raise the money, they just take it out. You have to put your credit card and they just yeah. take it out. So that's what we did. Um, yeah, you yeah. feel like you're supporting a good cause when you do it, I guess. And uh, other than that, I mean, <clears throat> other rides, you know, if they have really good food afterwards and a good party afterwards, sure. you know, it's it's a better kind of whole situation like that. And then you feel like you at least got some your money's worth out of it and a little bit more. We got. A pint glass, we got a shirt, we got these swag microfiber towels, which I took five because they're so freaking awesome. I think you're supposed to take one. I took five. <laughs> um, well, you won. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. That's Come my on. victory. That's how you were. Were, there were food stops with, um, you know, kind bars with, with you know, drinks, which with fruit Costco, and stuff like that. Muffins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, um, what am I missing? Am I missing anything? No. We, you know, we we got a bus ride to our part because mm -hmm. because we didn't do the 150, so they bus ride you out to the the you know that first 50, 50 miles. miles. Mm -hmm. Um, and and you know, yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, for that experience, yeah, there was a taco bar afterwards, which I didn't eat, but there was free beer afterwards, which I did. What kind of beer? Eat. Um, there were like three different choices. Oh. You know, it wasn't just all IPA, Paul. So. Well, I was thinking, you know, Bud, Bud Light. No, no, <laughs> oh my no, God. no, no. Um, so, well, it is North Idaho. So I'm, I'm, I'm blending that into this. Time. It is, yeah. <laughs> Colorado Kool Aid. I'm taking a topic from from David Sanley, a friend of mine at the at the Feed Zone podcast mm -hmm. over at Cycling Legends. He talked about a recent Fondo in Michigan um, that included the district road race. It, they 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 basically ran the road race categories ahead of the Fondo riders, which sounds a shit ton like gravel to me. Um, when there's gravel, he said there's right? gravel in that, that race too. Really? Yeah. I, I don't yeah, even remember that when I was on the show. there was some of gravel in that, that state. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so here, here we've got, in essence, 
a a course uh you know and, and not enclosed because the fondos we ride you stop at at red lights you know although we dodged a couple of them uh, and things like that but but you know a four-way stop you're expected to at least rolling stop and slow mm-hmm. down a road race you bomb through that shit i don't know what this this event did but i'd, I'd love your guys thoughts on the possible method of creating more road races that tie into this Fondo concept where now mind you the entrance did have to pay to ride the Fondo which means they paid for food stops even though they're not going to use them and they also had to pay a USA C fee on on top of that so the that's Fondo riders no the the, the racers, racers the oh, racers okay. so they had to pay for the Fondo and they had to pay an extra fee for USA cycling mm-hmm. so it's it's going to make it you know a little bit more expensive um, so I'd love to know if you guys had any thoughts upon this format and maybe the potential of the fact that we could see more races this way. We could see some more genuine road races this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, um, I mean, it gives the possibility of more spectators. I feel like, um, also maybe more, um, cause I feel like road racing, when you show up to a road race, it's just kind of like, Oh, you know, this is a pretty dull infield um Mm -hmm. and nothing left uh but i feel like this kind of can create a bit of a different atmosphere when it comes to road racing um also i think it's really fun because it gives riders an opportunity to race like whatever the state road race course and really see what like the cat one two pros are doing yeah um so i think that is kind of fun it kind of gives them the opportunity like when they ride the perry Rubay course you get to see what the racers do um obviously at a different level but I, I think it's kind of fun, and if it gives us the opportunity to have like a to more road racing, um, I I would take it. I have no complaints about it. Do you see any flaws in this design? <laughs> uh, well, I I I like the idea when I heard because I listened to that podcast, yeah. and I like the idea. I think uh, a lot of people it does it will bring more people and get more interest maybe into actual racing. Mm-hmm. And like Jackson says, you can compare your time to those of the, the pro one twos or whatever, or, you know, even as a cat three, you got, you're looking at this guy, like a grand Fondo guy beat me. I, I yeah. need to train mm-hmm. more. I mean, there's a lot of levels on that, that I like logistically and, and how to develop a course that you could do all that. A Fondo. In yeah. The race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it, unless you had a, like a rolling, I'd be curious. Do they have a rolling enclosure for the races, and then just let the Grand Fondo do their stop signs, jumping red lights and stuff? Yeah. Um, but I love the idea. We've got to think of something. I don't. I would never poo poo any novel idea. Because sometimes there's not there's not enough people to actually do the race to into yeah to marshal yeah. to raise enough money to actually put on a race to get yeah. the yeah. number of police and yeah. traffic control and stuff. So you get the fondo behind you with all the entry fees for that then you can kind of afford to actually put on the traffic control and stuff needed for the racers about you know back on the east coast you have the new york city grand fondo yeah and that's a very steep entry fee a number of my friends have done it i don't really have a desire to do it but um what is the cost so that is like probably like a couple like by 250 or something like that at least maybe 300 dollars. but you know you, you start on the george washington bridge they close that down you know and at least one of the decks of it and mm-hmm. there's you know all the uh the intersections are police controlled and they have actually a big you know pretty big payout for the winter floor mm-hmm. so it is basically like a road race at the front yeah and uh you know so so there's those types of races that i seriously think going. the 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 badge of fondo is almost minimizing what it truly is because i i keep thinking of this gravel font this gravel format where it is a gravel race the pros start you can ride with them as long as you can hang with them it's a race a fondo has this mentality of this food stop cookies fun but they offer prize money there is yeah. there is this concept where it is a true in essence, race. I, I, I'm struggling with Fondos being a race, I mm-hmm. guess is what I'm trying to say. And they actually do drug testing, I think, at that one. Really? <laughs> at, at New York, yeah. People they got busted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did, oh, who's they, the... There, there was a, one of our ex-pros uh, who rode for 
one of the Spanish teams for a long time. He was he was one of Chris Horner's teammates a long time who got nailed at a yeah, Fondo I I, too. I, think so. I can't remember who it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody will probably chime in mm-hmm. about an hour behind yeah. the delay. Yeah. Um, what I will say though is it's like I get what you're saying with the whole Grand Fondo thing, but I also wonder if um, nowadays I feel like that's changing a little bit. Like you can race anything that multiple people with a bicycle line up at Which the same time. Which is the time. true uh, essence of racing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that if the name is going to like decide um, the competitive nature of it, then it's like, why? I, I, I guess I don't understand that just because it's like you can race what I mean, like we did this last weekend, you can race whatever you want to race mm-hmm. as long as it is, like I said, and as long as it's just a bunch of people lining up at the same time, you can be it can be a race if you want it to be. Well, that's the same with the the TNT that we have yeah. throw mm-hmm. down Thursdays and and the breakfast ride back in the day. I mean, it really was full blown race, and you we left Spokane going to Cheney um, with people with like you know panniers and yeah. stuff, and then we just took off. I mean, that's always been the case. Mm-hmm. It's to me, it's like what's the price? I mean, what am I? With with one hundred and twenty five bucks that you guys paid, it was that really worth? Yeah, you know, a hundred miles. Are you willing to do that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and and even even for races like even balking at going down and doing a, a thirty five minute crit in Vancouver, Washington, which is a six hour drive. You know, the gas, the price of the gas, place to stay, mm-hmm. um, and then hitting Portland for another Criterion for another forty minute. Grit. I mean, you got to justify the cost nowadays. You know? You're old. I get. I know. I well, You're so you know, old. And yeah. There's <laughs> other things. I got grandkids. Ah, you know, yeah. and so you know. Well, I, I, I guess we also we. Yeah, there it is. I guess we also talk about when we talk about entry fees. We also, I feel like, kind of go against what we're saying with we got to support the racing. Yeah. That's why I. That's why I didn't have an issue with this last weekend. Spending the money, I mean, if if it keeps a thing that is a bicycle event going on, yeah. then I'll, I mean, I'll support it. They did a really good job, and it was worth the money and time for me. You know, plus I think a key to bike racing is what we did this weekend, and Brent, what you're doing in Iceland is we made a weekend out of it. My yeah. wife found a Airbnb in in town. Uh, a, a little condo in town. We rented that. We went to dinner both nights. We had great food. We had a great time. While you and I were riding, my wife and your fiance had a great time just screwing around in town and having a really good day. And that's, I think, um, these destination areas, these little places, these events, mm-hmm. you, a way to make it more of that weekend thing. Like you're saying, Paul. I mean, if there was, if there was a reason for you to go over to Vancouver. And there was stuff going on Festival, and all kinds of stuff and yeah. stuff and things like that where, where all of a sudden it's a family-based s- something going on. Mm-hmm. A crit should be a yeah. – there are ways to make those. I mean, mm-hmm. if we go to Tulsa Tough, that's a gigantic party, yeah. you know. Exactly. And so I think there's ways to make that that happen. I, I'm wondering what USAC is going to do with this and they're, if they're going to start get their claws into Fondos and suddenly start to make this an insurance-based thing and then mm-hmm. they're going to fuck it up. I'm, I'm yeah. seriously I mean, they, concerned about it. They do have kind of a uh, Grand, Grand Final World Series. Yes, and they do. Yeah. I know I've, there's been a couple guys, at least out in Connecticut, that I've ridden with that have done the uh, – there's a couple of qualifiers. I think the New Jersey Grand Fondo is one, and and they've won the – they've gone over to, like, uh, France to do the, the World Championships wow. and more than the USA kit and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> really? USA National Fondo team. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I like it. I like well, it. I did Coeur d'Alene. There was a, an Italian, Sal Italia had a, yeah. a Grand Fondo team that was, yeah. you know, was there. I remember that because I remember I had to uh, bring two different national anthems, the Italian national anthem and the, uh, obviously mm-hmm. the American national, U.S. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I don't understand why I had to play the national anthem for him. Well, he won. But anyway, he did. Yeah. He did. Mm-hmm. I didn't get an interview with him. Yeah, it, so. I, I'm leaning into that so and I want to get you I, I haven't told you guys I'm going to do this to you we asked you every, uh, the listeners we asked you guys a few weeks back to send us information on your event or an event that you might know about that we could that could use a plug and so we have our first to promote nice. and and this was sent to me and I want to know and and I, you know what they're sending it to us we can be honest but uh, you know here we go it's called the soul survivor 
taking place September 17th and 18th. And I apologize if I screw up the name because I live on the West Coast. Camp Susquehannock, Camp Susquehannock in Brackney, Pennsylvania. Uh, so here's the format from their website. You ready for this? So you, and I quote, you choose a discipline between mountain biking, trail running, or gravel grinding, which means we've lost Paul already. But I'm going to put Paul into a perspective <laughs> that I want to, I want to, I want to guess, if, 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 I want you to think that if there was a road option too. Mm -hmm. You or your team will compete in the dis discipline for the entire event. So trail runners will only do a trail run. Each discipline will have its own separate course. At the start of each hour, the participants will line up in the starting corral and they have one hour to complete a lap. If the participant finishes early, they can eat, rest, sing songs, basically do whatever they want while they wait for the next lap to start at the beginning of the next hour. Participants cannot start the next lap early. All must start each lap together. If they fail to finish the lap within the allotted time, they and their team are out of the event. After the 12th hour lap, the time to complete a lap will be reduced by five minutes for each reoccurring lap. So, for example, 13th, 55 minutes, 14th, 50 minutes, and so on. The event will continue until there is a sole survivor in each category. If there are multiple participants starting a lap and none of the participants finish within the allotted time, the competitors will be ranked by their time to finish the final lap. So, my questions are, thoughts about something like this and if there was a road option or if there was just bikes if it was road bikes mountain bikes gravel bikes the best to rule them all or something like that thoughts on this on this event i think it's a i think it's a fun idea i really like that idea it reminds me a lot of um that last man standing uh fixed gear race that they mm -hmm. do um it's just where it's just lap to lap to lap. Whoever's last gets pulled. Um, yeah. missing, missing out on the track. Yeah. 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 Um, so it reminds me a lot of that. Um, but I think it's cool. I could imagine it takes a long time to separate those final kind of those final competitors. Yeah, you're talking 14 hours minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a long race. yeah. And then, yeah, I, I could imagine like after a while, they're just neck and neck until one decisive moment it's not it's it's a fun time but that's a long long day <laughs> paul's just like fuck well, what's I, your I next think, topic pat well, yeah <laughs> no, I, I like the idea and i encourage anything like that it, it on a personal level it doesn't appeal to me i'm you know obviously just kind of uh curmudgeonly yeah curmudgeonly and, 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 and uh, there's one thing i like to do and it's just racing yeah. bikes and so um you know, but I could I, you get I, in if there was a road option? Could I you would imagine? have to. I would have. It would have to take a crew like this in here to say, "Hey, come do this." And We'd I have to blackmail. I would. Mm -hmm. I would never be personally. I wouldn't be the leader, dudes. Let's go do this. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be that person. That's just not. But I would do it for a group of guys, and I think you would have tons of fun. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw shade mm -hmm. on it. No, I, exactly. I would have fun yeah, doing yeah. it. But, um, yeah, I'm just monogamous on the on the bike racing thing i think so yeah Brent, got any thoughts it sounds sounds fun I, i'm kind of in paul's camp are you I mean, okay okay i don't know that i would be uh doing that especially with trail running involved but yeah well um, you you pick one oh, you, you pick, pick a one. discipline okay. so you pick uh, let's say you're going to do just gravel your team is just gravel the whole time or you individually are just gravel mm -hmm. yeah. it'd, be, it'd be fun weekend with your friends i guess yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. okay Mm -hmm. um, I keep thinking of it as uh, a couple options. Number one is, um, especially after after promoting a, a, the 24-hour race, is um, it becomes this festival. Mm -hmm. You have trail runners, you have mountain bikers, you have gravel riders, all in one place. It becomes a huge party, which is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, second of all, it provides you an opportunity. So let's say the race starts on Saturday morning. Maybe you do crits on Friday night or something like that. Because I remember specifically, like, for example, when I was in charge, was helping with the Coeur d'Alene Fondo, they had all the permits and everything in line, and they did a downtown Twilight yeah. crit the night before. Because everybody's there, we got all this signage, we got all the timing equipment, let's, let's do it. 
And so I'm just I'm thinking there are so many ways to start incorporating different tiers of bike racing to these mass start events which are never going away mass start events are what we need more of they're going to provide us an, an, an inlet into the sport and they're going to they're going to make communities more more excited about about seeing bike races well i'm all for that kind of look, what you talked about uh the quarter lane grand fondo mm-hmm. um after our first downtown recent downtown criterium uh some of the chat was because we're doing it in September, that's the transition to crit. I mean, not crit, excuse me, if, uh, crit cyclocross. to cyclocross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we would do the twilight crit on Saturday and Sunday, have a cyclocross at Riverfront Park. Oh, wow. And that so, would be sweet. you know, and that's oh, that, my you know, God. you're looking at Memorial Day weekend type situation, wow. but you can't do it in Spokane Memorial Day weekend because of pig out in the park. Unless you did it at a different park. Yeah. It, yeah. That, you know, it could be Manitou. It could be, yeah. you know, yeah. and I think those ideas are hanging there and I think they, I think they would be successful. But when it comes to bike racing, it's a slow process. It is. You, you have to just relax and not think it's going to go gangbusters. Do you blame that on people willing to pull the trigger and make the race happen? Or do you blame well, that I, on I think bike racers? We all just want to race. Yeah. We don't want to put on events. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's and I, I am extremely guilty of that. So am I. Yeah. Extremely yeah. guilty. And the thing is, is I think, too, is the permitting part and getting closures. And you, you're you having sure. to deal. I mean, the, the city has to deal with people like, you know, I can't even get out of my driveway yeah. because of the stupid, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. I need this to is pick two up days. a newspaper yeah. and cigarettes. But, <laughs> but somehow Spokane has the ability to do it. We have the largest timed race, Bloomsday. Yeah. and. Mm-hmm. Next weekend, we have Hoop Fest, the largest three-on-three basketball tournament in the town. So uh, if there's any city that can do it, and we had the largest pro-am race back and Olympic trials back in the 80s yeah. here mm-hmm. in Spokane. So, you know, I think this done. is the environment. But I'm just, I just kind of keep coming up with ideas to reinvent the wheel. Reinvent the wheel. All right. Thanks, you guys. Let's get to the news. News time. What are you going to see after this? I don't know. It's all fresh, people. Wait for it. It just came to me. Wait for it. My beer's empty. (laughs) What can I get you? No, I'm fine. (laughs) I'm probably probably better at this point in the show that I just stay a little... Loose tongued. Uh, news brought to us by our friends at Scratch Labs. You guys who are in the midst of a huge sale, get to packfiller.com, click the link, and grab fuel for the summer, including the recent raspberry limeade with caffeine, which my wife is stealing from me daily. She's like, Oh, I like that stuff you have. And then she's, she's like drinking while at work because she likes it. It's got a little shot and it's, it's good. It's delivered. It's delicious. Uh, The return of pineapple is also back and so much more. So news headlines, gang. Um, In case you didn't know, there's a big race happening about 10 days from now. It's called the Tour de France. Um, And Yumbo Visma draws first blood. Rowan Dennis has been left out of the Yumbo Visma team for the Tour de France, which is headlined by Primoz Roglic, Jonas Vingegaard, Wout van Aert, Sepp Kuss, Stefan Kreiswick, the (laughs) hanger himself, um, and providing the key climbing support for Roglic and Vingegaard with Tish Benut, Nathan Van Hoydonk, and Christoph Laporte completing the roster. Um, while Roglic and Vingegaard lead, I'm going to ask about that, uh, the Yumbo Visma General Classification Challenge, Van Aert has the freedom to pursue the green jersey after he claimed three stage wins on last year's tour. The Yumbo Visma squad has been constructed with those, des- uh, those separate goals in mind. So the team... I think that I that I covered all the guys that I I miss anything. Um, so gentlemen, uh, thoughts, especially the one missing a specific uh, high uh, maintenance Australian. I don't think they need him. Really? When I saw that, I didn't think they need him. They have well, Dennis Rowan is going to be calling you tomorrow. Well, that's <laughs> I'll take I'll take the call. Uh, what the actual <laughs> fuck, mate? Uh, the reason why I say I don't think they need him is because they have the Olympic gold medalist in time trialing. Um, they have Wout Van Aert, uh, who probably well, could have won. <laughs> who probably could have won that race as well. Um, and <laughs> you sure you need the professional? Yeah. 
sorry, Jay. No, you're good. But it seems like for domestiques, it seems like they have it covered. Um, yeah. Kreuzweig for the for the mountains, along with Sepkus, and whether one becomes mm. uh, domestique for the other, uh, Vingegaard or Roglic, you know, it seems like they have all their bases covered. And I think to add a big personality, which I think has been kind of squashed over his Ineos and Jumbo Visma years, um, could could add another level of difficulty that they just don't need to deal with. They got to focus on winning a tour for the first time. Um, and I think they want to go all guns a blazing for winning the jerseys this year. So I think that no distractions go with the best, no drama riders that they have. And I think they have also brought the best riders that they have. So mm-hmm. I should mention that Dennis does have some intestinal issues. He's, he's dealing yeah, with he's, some, he's, some virus it. issues, so stuff that's been going on. So um, things like that. Anybody else on, on and now? And, and I'd, I'll even throw this in. Um, can a team? You look at this team on paper. This is an unbelievable team. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the strength of this team. On top of your just initial thoughts, um, even before we know what UAE is bringing, can a team like this be unstoppable? Why or why not? And what does it take to beat one person? who we all probably agree has the greatest chance to compete, to, to do it again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be the situation of too many kind of leaders on the team. Yeah. That if Wout is going for all these stage wins and and then, you know, with the uh, Vingegaard and, and, and uh, Roglic, you know, if they can't, if, if something happens to one of them or if it goes pretty far into the race where – one of them is not really the all-out leader. Yeah. And or if uh, one of them hits the deck. Yeah. Yeah. I primos. <laughs> <laughs> he has a tough time keeping the rubber side down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where if the other teams are just all going all in for one guy, it could be an advantage. Sure. Mm-hmm. And that's what what uh, Yumbo Visma did last year, and they finished with what four, and that mm-hmm. you can see the struggle that they had at. Um, if you watch that video, I told you guys to watch. Plan I did. B. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good, wasn't it? I really liked yeah. it. Yeah, I don't think I did my homework. Uh, too busy no, watching homework. what Bachelor or something. Like? No, I'm watching uh, <laughs> yard design videos tonight oh, with my geez. wife because if oh, you've you seen go. my backyard, it, it it honestly looks like a really abandoned vacant yeah. lot. How, how long is uh, you not scooped up Bender's poo? Right? It has none. To, well, I can't find Bender's poo, and li- I can't tall. find Bender. Yeah, the grass is that tall. <laughs> I'm not joking. Going, I wish I was is. joking. I wish yeah. I was joking. It's not that. It's horrible. But anyway, so I, I think going in with two leaders. I mean, you look what Vanegard was like. He really came to a certain level, and Monfon too. That that's where he dropped. Uh, poker jar mm-hmm. and um, so that you look at that and you think well you've got one guy who is like solid on, on stage races other than the tour and you want him to win but you got to have a backup plan mm-hmm. a plan B mm-hmm. and uh, there's one guy that can do it and mm-hmm. you know I think they kind of showed their their intentions during the Dauphiné yeah. without a doubt um, you know Wout was Nailing all what he could, and he put in when he could, yeah. and then you know pulled the pulled the cord when he had to, um, going up the hills to save his energy for the next day. And I think that's mm-hmm. their plan. Do you think those EUs are going to stay at bay when it's something as 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 gigantic as the tour? Do you think those what are going to stay? The at bay? egos. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, because you look at to me like it, one of the things I wanted to point out um, was. Rokulic, when he lost the first time to Pogaccia, and, and he went over and, and every time he loses or he mm-hmm. congratulates, mm-hmm. he's a humble, yeah. humble person. Yeah, he's a humble guy. And, and when he goes down, he goes down. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he had – the ego's not there. Uh, Vanegard, I don't know. I think he's young enough. He's already said, I can win the tour. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think, That's the one I'm worried about. Well, I think he can pull back the reins a little bit. He might be a little Chris Froome – Wiggins type situation at some point. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, the only thing is, like, he is really Fingard is stronger, but he kind of defers to Roglic, and then they don't win. Then, yeah, then that's yeah. That could be an that's issue. where yeah. you've got the next Lamont Nino <laughs> yeah. kind of a thing mm-hmm. like that. I could also see someday Vingegaard jumping ship to like to an Ineos almost. Yeah, yeah. just because then they could find that full soul leader. 
Well, it's funny you should mention that because that takes me perfectly. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> to my segue. next my next story. Anytime. Richard Carapaz being rumored to be yeah. uh, switching EF. jumping ship to <laughs> EF Easy Post. Mm-hmm. Rumor mill still running, uh, but this is the prime headline. Um, uh, thoughts about this this move? Um, is this a rider racing for a paycheck and a nice retirement? Is this um, you know, Ineos to education first, no offense to either team, but it sounds kind of like moving from the Yankees to the Mariners if you're an American baseball fan. <laughs> it's like moving, you know, from from the, the biggest budgets, the everything, marginal gains across the board to, shit, a stage would be cool. Well, well I'm starting to notice that I think, I think uh, Carapaz, first of all, I think he wants that sole leadership on a team. In EOC, he doesn't get it. He, they, I mean, he US, had it the Giro, though. He, yeah, but also there, I think Inio. I wonder if Ineos is planning for the future. I, yeah. At least that's what I'm seeing a lot of. They're buying a lot of young, and I don't know if Carapaz is necessarily that anymore. Yeah. And um, if he moves to EF, I mean, they do have a pretty strong team. Nielsen Palace is riding mm-hmm. very, very well. Um, I mean, Rigoberto Uran could probably be a pretty damn good um domestique in the high mountains i mean it when wow. you really th- when good, you- good luck telling rigo that but no i <laughs> yeah. agree with you. i agree with you if it, it, if it came to that kind of a yeah. situation it's, what a great one-two punch gosh yeah and it also it's that south american kind of uh draw that i think mm-hmm. also brings yeah they have him a good, to that they have a good uh environment for a lot of south american riders on that team for sure mm-hmm. yeah i have to agree that that if you look at um EF, they, they're notorious for having a lot of, you know, South Americans, mm-hmm. you know, mainly Colombians and stuff, and they have that culture and everything kind of going there, um, mixed in with Americans. But uh, Enios, I think you can see, like Jackson brought up, they're focused on classic riders, and then mm-hmm. they're they're picking up riders that are British to do the yeah, next they, British. You can like, see that youth yeah. is, that's what they're after. Their their style is more the train power, you know, you know, plan. You know, you're running. We'll just have a train going up the mountain at yeah. you know 400 watts, and you pull off and you pull off. And South Americans don't do that. They're just randoms. Like things are getting slow. I'm gonna hammer it. Bam. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. look at Carapaces always race that way. And Iran, all the Colombians, all the South Americans don't. So systematically, it could be a really good move. Yeah. yeah. I think Carapaz yeah. was way more successful even before his win in, in the drill with Movistar. Yeah. Just his style of riding. And he gets to, you know, not that he, he's a slouch because he's been on the podium on Grand Tours. But, yeah. um, but that's not his style because they don't function like, you know, I think Brent and I just hammering out this even pace at whatever wattage we can handle. Mm-hmm. That's not how they do. They just mm-hmm. punch, max, recover, bang, bang, yeah. bang, and draw people out that way. So, so it, it could be a good move. It's yeah, not, I think so. I think a, for Carapace, it's not a hey, mm-hmm. I'm getting long in the tooth, trying to move to Trek no. Segafredo. No. Well, he is getting long in the tooth. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think he's, he's 29. I think. He, uh, he's I a shitty super guy. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the pandemic-sized elephant in the room. Uh, COVID has not gone away. It it stripped the Tour de Swiss clean. Uh, Peter Sagan seems to apparently have some oh evil <laughs> person pumping yeah. it into his hotel room at night because yeah, he's, there's something going on that the guy's had it now three times. Yeah. yeah. Um, or has he just had long COVID symptoms and just had another spike in it? Uh, those types of things. So um, thoughts on the upcoming tour and the implications COVID could have. Um, I, I, I want to remain posi- positive about this kind of stuff, but you know my, me, my brain's going, we're fucked. It's not going to be a tour. It's, you know, it's going to be too hot. We've got climate issues going where, the, where the, I mean, Tour de Suisse was baking hot. I, the Tour de France is going to be even hotter. Yeah. The, 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 the thoughts of shortened stages are flying around. Um, mm-hmm. Am I going to have anything to look forward to, you guys? I, I want you to reassure me here, please. Well, I think Dan Lloyd said yesterday in the Racing News show that an ASO-sponsored mm-hmm. race, nobody has ever – contracted covid was that it yeah yeah that's what he said aso other than it started really it started yeah. at perry nice after perry nice yeah after when that. they shut everything down yeah, that we know aso that. has not had yeah so i think that's a really good thing i mean paul didn't you text us one time that you can't be you have to race you have to be vaccinated if, to race in france yeah. that was yeah we were talking about yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so i think that 
a lot of those precautions will come into play and that'll be mm-hmm. a really good helper. Um, but I also think that I said this last year, um, it, it is the biggest race in the entire calendar. They're not going to let this go away. Ultimately, it's it's going to go on and there will be a lot of precautions and I think it'll I think it'll be fine. Um, temperature wise, it's always hot. There's always one day where it's like, God, these riders are so hot. They need extra hydration, stuff like that. Um, and of course, it'll be on one of those terrible flat days where nobody wants to be out on the bike. But I think it's I it's all going to go. I think it's all going to happen. Um, I'm just excited to focus on the racing part of it. Yep. You know? Yeah. Do we so re- poo on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do we reach any point where um, the the health of the riders is is being threatened, um, especially with COVID? Um, we've got people who are especially going into the Tour de France. You've got the the best riders from each organization. They are th- you know specifically chosen for that moment. They are at the highest peak of their form. You are. An, a, an abstract sneeze away from you know a, a horrible sickness. These guys are so fragile when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I mean, and then the heat and those types of issues going in. I mean, are we are we concerned about the health of the, the overall health of the riders? I'm concerned about Peter Sagan when, that he's had it now three times. Well, I think I and think long term effects. Yeah, I think the medical field has kind of got a grasp on that and and. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how many people have lost. Uh, there's a lot of riders I know that have still affected by long term that mm-hmm. haven't even got back into the game. And it'd be a shame to see that. But I'm not aware of anybody dying. Maybe somebody has died. Yeah. But their career could be ended on this. That's that's the unfortunate thing for pushing it through. But I think we've got the precautions, in my opinion, that people are. That's why they're testing frequently mm-hmm. and that type of thing to prevent something to happen. I mean. Bike racing is a race from the time you sign on to do the race, yeah. whether it's COVID or blowing a tire in a corner or, or you know, being uh, being named uh, Richie Port. I mean, you're going to – things could go rotten. <laughs> <laughs> stage nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's never going to work out. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I do have to address this one too, and, and my wife's going to be upset with me if she does listen to the show. When I, when I bring up Garrett Thomas – uh, my question is: A true winner or just the last strong man standing? What are your thoughts? You can be cruel if you want, or you can be like the he's... last strong man, yeah, standing. You yeah, think so? Sergio Higuita can't time trial very well, yeah. so I think that it was just nailed on. Yeah, he was. I mean, now mind you, before everybody started dropping like flies, he was right up there. Yeah, he wasn't number one guy. <laughs> I though. was about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> He wasn't. No. Yeah. Was it Pickup? No, no, Pickup wasn't. I, who yeah. was the? Who was their? Uh, oh, it was writers that got Ethan had, Hader or something. Was he on? No, yeah. Hader wasn't. I can't remember. I think it was a Colombian or something that was. Oh, to, Danny Martinez. Yeah, Dan, yeah. Danny Martinez oh, okay. had to pull out. Yeah. So I mean, he was obviously working for him, mm-hmm. whether that's their schedule or whatever, and maybe Enios is back. He's a backup like Vindegard, you know, to mm-hmm. whoever they bring. So. Um, yeah, I, I think his potential's there. Uh, mm-hmm. I still do. And what he's thirty six, you know, that's pretty old. But you know, <laughs> I mean, in, comparatively to Taddy Pogacar, yeah. it's my yeah. age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not. Notice, I'm not leaning in any way, shape, or form towards you guys making those final picks because that's obviously next week. But mm-hmm. but because Brent's well, Brent Brent's be here. here, that's the, right. my thing. Okay. Because Brent's here, we're going to put him on the spot. Um, <laughs> well, and, and he set I'm, up that. Are you going to set up another oh, yes, deal for us? Fantasy, uh, Remember, he did a fantasy oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, now man. we got him on. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, he's going to do it." Kelsey set that up too high. <laughs> we'll put it out there. But uh, so um, let's. I'm, I'm just kind of keeping it generic here. To too, but uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some categories out you out here at you, and I'm gonna ask you to see what you think uh, if you can pick names for each category. So, for example, podium picks, riders who you think are going to be on the podium. You can pick th- should I well three or four riders? What do you think? Probably three. Three. Yeah, three. Yeah. Okay, so three riders you have to pick that you think are going to be podium podium ready for the tour. You know, all things. Working out wonderfully. They have rubber side down. Hi, Primos. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to go with um, Poji Car and uh, hmm. I guess <laughs> I would go with Roglic, probably yeah. with Vingegaard. Vingegaard? If, he can, oh. if, he can, if he can keep the, uh, you know, the, the rubber side down on the road. That would be a predictable, mm-hmm. uh, not, not a predictable, predictable, a strong choice yeah. of mm-hmm. a top three. But as far as like a third place guy, I don't know. I mean, that is a, I think someone like, um, is it Vlasov? Yeah. yeah. I would probably put him as like yeah. third place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sprinters. Two riders. I'll let you. I'll let you pick two two contestants for the green jersey. Mm, that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> I've, I've heard this. This is not the best um, sprinters Tour de France, but yeah, um, because that's you got to always take that into account. Gotta, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I think you got to put Wout out up there for the green mm-hmm. jersey, yeah. and uh, let me see if uh, Vanderpool yeah it, it goes the whole distance this yeah. year. Mm-hmm. He I did the Giro. Those, those would be my two mm-hmm. picks. Yeah. Okay, uh, a, a dark horse, somebody who you think is hiding in the in the background that's gonna have some sort of a breakout ride in any shape or form, sprinting, uh, climbing, anything like that. Mm, that's a that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> um, the American guy on the EF again. Um, oh, Nelson, Nelson, Nelson Palace. Palace. Yeah. Yeah. Palace, Palace. I, I think he oh, could I, do you know, he, he just finished fourth in the in the tour of Swiss. Swiss, yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. you know, yeah. he's he's definitely riding pretty strong. I think he could get a top ten. That would so. be brilliant. Yeah, be awesome. that'd be great. That yeah. would be a gigantic return of of the USA. I like um, his choices. I do too. Yeah. I do yeah. too. Um, and is it, and I'll open this up to everybody. How about thoughts in terms of um? I mean, we haven't seen all the um, you know uh, guys like McNulty. Oh, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what kind of uh, what are we going to see from the U.S. in terms of representation? Anybody got any thoughts? McNulty's going to be working for. You yeah. think he's gonna, you think yeah. he's on? Yeah. You yeah. think he's in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or even with when you got guys like Hershey and uh, who just uh, was with Pogacar in um, Slovenia. Uh, What's his name? Oh, um, uh, the, the Polish Rafael Mica. Rafael, Rafael Mica. Mica. Yeah. flying. Yeah, where mm-hmm. you got a Rochambeau to to pick a yeah, to, <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. Always to, do paper. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Should have, <laughs> ah, idiot! You should have done paper. Um, so I mean, that's uh, you're talking a deep team there too. But that's yeah. Um, any other Americans you, you think is uh, does Sepkus have a have any chances, yeah, or is he just going to be? He's going to be workhorse. Blowing mm-hmm. the maybe the, maybe. Engine a, out. Maybe have an opportunity for a stage win, depending on how, you know, yeah, the guys are doing. Yeah, yep, yep, so. exactly. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the. Nah, I should get into this le- next week, but I don't want to ruin it for Brent. But, but Brent's not here. But yeah, uh, the, the, the <laughs> we have a we have a, a cobblestone stage. Hooray. Oh yeah. yeah, they just altered that. They softened they it up a little bit. Oh, I they just, did. I just read that on the way here. Probably because Roglic couldn't handle that. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of people are <laughs> like, wait a minute. Do yeah. well, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I think a lot of people are beating the drum. Like, wait a minute. Well, this that could was be a good tour. And if one of them goes out on the cobbles, that was the one tour uh, Froome missed out on. Yeah, but he crashed before. He crashed. He already in the crashed once stage. before at the cobble stage, but yeah. he cr- crashed on a, on a roundabout, not in the cobbles. Oh. And he crashed like the day before, so he already had a bad rest. So people always use that as an example. I say poo poo. I guess I'm one mm-hmm. of those people. Yes, you are. Poo poo people. Yeah, I am a poo poo person. Poo poo to you with knobs on. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> All right, Bre- uh, Brent. How how far away f- are you from the from the big trip? I guess it's coming. Say, well, the ride is July twenty third. I believe. Okay. So yeah, it's coming up, dude. Month, I expect a full away. report. Yeah, I expect a full Lots report. Lots of pictures. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Maybe some think photos. Taking pictures. Uh, Paul and Jackson, do you guys have anything on the on the near future? Or are you just gonna all be like, oh, I'm, I'm engaged. Oh, I have grandkids. I do have grandkids. I yeah. I <laughs> don't. No, you don't. No, I. But I, I I'm. I decided to ride I, across the state of Washington. I'm still working on 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 uh, sweeten up the pot with my wife to justify spending like five hundred dollars a weekend for an hour and a half of <laughs> of a race. But I'm going to visit Jack. That's how I'll have to. Yeah, and I'll help him okay. out on his. You got to let me know on that. Yeah. yeah, because the week before I'm doing a 450 mile ride over four days mm-hmm. to the other side of the state. And if I if if you're in, 
I have to alter my plans really a little bit. In. I really want to do this. Shit, it, get off it's the not pot, me man. at this point. This sounds terrible, but I got I got to convince my wife because it, no, I just I, no. I took, I'm like, sighing because I understand. Was, yeah, I'm sighing because I 100 yeah. percent understand, and I've been. I, I there. took a huge pay cut to be where I'm at, but you know, on that's this show. Thing. Yeah, that yeah, I'm losing show. money yeah. on this show. Damn right. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> now, aboard. Yeah, now, just becoming an, a city employee yeah. working in the public, it's yeah. not doesn't pay well. But I got plenty of time to go do the things I want to do, but I don't have the money to do it. Right um, now. I'm going to throw you under the bus, Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 before before we we sign off on the show, do you have any um, uh, quirky Brent Soderbergh stories that we can we can embarrass him with? <laughs> no, I think he shared shared a, a couple. We were talking about. You know the days gone by, but the only one I can I can think of is is that uh, I appreciate other diesels. We were doing Horse Haven. You were on a, on your team. You had moved back to Seattle, yeah. and um, and we got dropped on the first lap. There's a, like a six mile climb, and mm-hmm. I, and I was on Kirk Willett's wheel, which is idiotic yeah. because he's there is 48. no wheel. Yeah, I've been in a yeah. break with him before. And <laughs> yeah, no drought. For those who don't know Kirk, plus, he was already he was already he, he was five nine yeah. probably tops, and then he'd slam his stem mm-hmm. down on top of that just to make himself. And he disappear. wrote a fifty nine centimeter frame. Yeah, so like the top of my wheel was where his back was. You were in a 59? He wrote a 49. 49, excuse me. 49. 49. Yeah, 59. Yeah. I'm like, that's no. bigger than mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I remember Not that pulling size out matters. of that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I pulled out of that and I was just scrambling, trying to just find a wheel and all of a sudden Brent comes by and we had a group of guys and we chase, you probably don't remember this, and you had to drop down this hill yeah, I remember, and we I remember caught that. at the bottom of the hill <laughs> the whole group mm-hmm. and I'm like, whew, well, you know, it's just one more big lap, and we'll be okay. And then um, our guy, Scott McSpadden, said, Paul, there's a eight-man group up, up front. We need to chase that down. And then you probably got the same report. And so there was you, I, and probably two other guys. Mm-hmm. We just went all the way. And I remember we take that corner going up that hill is about 120, 30-degree corner, and you start climbing. It wasn't a steep climb, but when you... Yeah, it was just a long... <clears throat> yeah, long pretty soon I'm going backwards, and the next thing you know was I had people going, well, Craig Willett, his brother who's like 6'3", he said, yeah. hey, Paul, you're going the wrong way because everybody's going this way. <laughs> We're going this way. So, But anyway, just getting behind him, just to wax back, you know, when we started pulling, I just started thinking about that time, and we're doing that, that uh, segment. Mm-hmm. And and just seeing his style of riding is like oh this is so it's awesome. back yeah 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 the, it, you, he's a little bit knee end when you pedal okay. just slightly not Andre uh, Schmiel where break, it's rubbing but the it's top nice too it's not like yeah. and you don't have a wacky wheat knee and I'm yeah. like I think I remember this you know back yeah. in the day so that's the only story you have you know what that is that is the thing about this board and I'm gonna wax a little sentimental here is is the fact that there are always the stories there are always those moments that you you will never forget and there are the you know the 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 friends and the and the those experiences along the way and in the fact that I can be on Paul with you and I'm not busting your balls about this I can be on a ride with you and you will start telling a story that I know I've heard five or six times but I'm still a thousand percent happy that I get to hear it again because there are things that I'm going to hear about it that are different from last time or things that I'm going to I'm going to comment on that are different from last time and then and then that's what you know that's what is so memorable about the sport and um I can't sign off the show without saying the fact that um, I got to do 100 miles with with my son last weekend in a in a race effort, and I was barely holding on. I was barely holding on. And Jackson, you were you were shouting at me to keep the shit going and keep <laughs> going. And I and it wasn't a condescending. It was a it was a it was a tear jerking moment. And um, I, I, I finished across the line and I, there's no way I was first, but, uh, but um, my wife came up to me and she said, how cool was that? And I just looked at her and I said, I'm not crying. You're crying. There's shit in my eyes, you know? <laughs> and, and I just wanted to say, I can't even look at you right now. And, and for those of you who can see my camera, you can see I'm looking down um, because it, it was just th- those friendships in those moments. And, and that was a, and I think I told you in a text that was a memory bank moment. Mm-hmm. That was something that I will never, 
ever for the life of me forget that day that ride that th- those people the guy that we were with who had socks that were really long and when he did his arrow <laughs> tuck he t- he kind of quirked his butt in the air it was just it was weird and how he did it and i if you're listening to the show i want to know about your why so he told you to do that but um it, it, you know it, it, they're just the personalities and the people you meet along mm-hmm. the way are so are so element and uh, uh, not element um uh, you know excellent i mm-hmm. guess is if lack of a better word but um so there I, I gushed um that was such a that was such a wonderful moment and and uh, you know we have those throughout time so i should guess i should shut up and stop talking so there we go end of another show send us your events everybody i will be happy to feature an event on every week's show um send us uh, through email through social media through whatever you happen to look up the words pack filler and if it isn't something to do with the lumber industry <laughs> chances are it's us uh rate us on <laughs> itunes subscribe to us via youtube tell a friend and we will talk to you next week brent thanks for coming all the way here and just specifically to be on this show <laughs> oh, <it's been> <laughs> thanks for having me back <laughs> thanks guys Thanks.